According to a recent Bloomberg Economics report, the PMLN is credited with the best performance in managing the economy over the past three decades compared to rivals PTI and PPP. Using the Misery Index, a combination of unemployment and inflation data, PMLN scored higher. Despite legal issues, Imran Khan remains the most popular politician with a 57% approval rating, while Nawaz Sharif's rating rose from 36% to 52% in the last six months. The report suggests Nawaz Sharif might return to power after the February 8 general polls. However, challenges await any winning party due to persistently high inflation and elevated unemployment. Pakistan's annual inflation stands at 29.7% and the recent IMF tranche of $700 million comes with stringent conditions. The new government is expected to implement potentially unpopular measures such as withdrawing subsidies and raising taxes. Responding to the report, PMLN emphasized Nawaz Sharif's international acclaim and pledges to bring a new era of development, vowing to address youth unemployment if elected. As the election approaches, political strategies intensify with Nawaz Sharif and PPP chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari gearing up for the February 8 polls. The Pakistan-Afghanistan Torkham border closed for 10 days due to visa restrictions on truck drivers reopened on Tuesday. The closure resulted from Islamabad requiring passports and visas from Afghan drivers reciprocated by the Afghan Taliban banning Pakistani truckers. The move followed Pakistan's decision to expel over a million undocumented foreigners, mainly Afghans, causing economic losses of approximately $100,000 daily for both nations. This closure is not the first, having occurred several times in recent months with clashes and political reservations cited as causes. The reopening focused on commercial consignments came after discussions between the Afghan Consul General and Pakistani authorities in Peshawar. Afghan drivers received visa and passport relaxations until March 31st, with strict entry requirements starting April 1st. Business leaders from both countries opposed the closures, emphasizing significant losses and disruptions to trade with Central Asia. The decision to relax visa requirements reportedly stemmed from discussions between Molana Fazlur Rahman and the Afghan government during his recent visit to Kabul. European Union Foreign Affairs Chief Joseph Borrell emphasized that Israel cannot unilaterally impede the creation of a Palestinian state following the Gaza conflict. Speaking at a Brussels press conference with the Egyptian Foreign Minister Samet Shokri, Borrell declared that Israel should not have veto power over the self-determination of the Palestinian people. He highlighted the United Nations' repeated recognition of the Palestinians' right to self-determination, emphasizing that no entity can override it. Shokri echoed the sentiment, stating that there is an international consensus on resolving the conflict through a two-state solution. He urged the international community to implement the solution, emphasizing the availability of means, resources and mechanisms to do so. The caretaker information minister Murtaza Solangi announced that international observers and journalists are set to monitor and cover Pakistan's February 8 general elections. Last October, the Election Commission of Pakistan invited international observers and 49 visas have been issued to foreign journalists with 32 more in process. Solanki dispelled rumours that no international observers were visiting, emphasising that 174 requests were received from various outlets. Details included 25 applications from Britain, 8 from Russia, 13 from Japan, 5 from Canadian parliamentarians, 2 from South Africa and 5 from Commonwealth nations. Local journalists received 6,065 accreditation cards distributed across major cities. Accreditation for foreign journalists and observers is focused on Karachi, Lahore and Islamabad but exceptions are considered case by case for other cities. 
Despite the January 20th deadline, officials are still reviewing submitted requests. Solanki highlighted the presence of international media outlets like CNN, BBC and Japanese media representatives in the country.